My next project is a sculpture to be placed in Town Centre in Dorchester. Right, what, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, is making the structure using concrete and forged steel and actually combining the two. Uh, it's something that I do quite a, quite a lot of and I'm, I'm very keen to actually promote it as sort of one of the main bodies of my work. Uh, I do work in mixed media quite a lot um, and enjoy working with glass and water and timber and various other materials. Uh, the central top pool here is going to be cruciform in structure, uh, rather similar to the original that we think was on site, which is, uh, this, is a, this is a picture of uh, the site at Nîmes in France, uh, and that's a Roman, Roman distribution point, one of the last apparently re remaining good uh, architectural evidence of, of how they actually looked. So I'm kind of mirroring the structure um, here um, with tunnels channels cut into here. Most, most of the work that I do is innovative um, in, in that there's something technical about it which is kind of on the edge. Um, quite often coming from research in industrial, you know, contemporary industrial uh, methods. I did a series of events about five years ago. Some of the textures that, uh, that, that I've been working uh, with the, the concrete, uh, they have a very corally um, kind of shell um, th th there's something natural and stone-like about them. Work that I've just finished with, uh, with Neil Wilkin, um, the sculpture in, in Western uh, uh, the stainless steel stems of about three metres tall uh, and glass uh, suncatcher flowers um, sort of on the top. There's a row of 30 of them uh, we produced. I, I did the stainless steel. to be made redundant when I was 52. So I decided, because I've always liked pottery and always wanted to be a potter, that I would go back to art school. Whilst I was at Goldsmith, um, I had an opportunity to build a kiln, and I loved that, and to do um, soda firing. What you do is you create quite a large cloud of vapour when you're putting the salt or soda in. At a certain temperature, it will fuse with the silica, the sodium, in the clay and form a glassy surface. I um, 
have been involved with a couple of cooperatives in the past and I thought it would be a good idea to set one up in what was the old Cheltenham and Gloucester in Shepton Mallet. So we formed a cooperative of 10 members and opened up the shop on November the 13th last year. And? And so far we find from Shepton brilliant. Can we put um, some of these leaflets and things into the Shepton Mallet Tourist Information Centre? Yes, yes, we can I do that. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. Lorraine, well, Lorraine will agree anyway. on Good. that. So okay. that won't be a problem. That'll be useful. Yeah. So this should be, you know, really good news for Shepton Mallet being the, the centre of this, this area as regards the arts and crafts. Yes. yes. For Somerset Week. I grew up near the sea um, and for many years I used to fish on, on rivers and lakes um, and fish in the sea as well. Um, and I suppose in, in terms of the work the influence really came in when I produced a commission for Wessex Water. logic is more fluid and leads you where it wants to go um, without having an end objective if you like um, so I think that's influenced my work a lot even distinguish between human nature and nature. It's like there isn't a divide. Um, and I suppose there isn't really a divide with my work with the paintings and the sculpture.
right from my teenage teenage days, I've made things, made 3D things. Um, and my mum and I ran a store together where I'd sell chess sets and things like that, and she'd sell her fabrics and knitwear. Um, and so you can see there's a, uh, a carry-on from that because I, I still do a market store and sell my pieces off my store. Uh, years ago, I managed to get hold of a, a water buffalo skull uh, that had been bagged and was uh, bagged uh, and was hanging in the stable yard of uh, a big house. I knew one day I'd do something with it. Um, and when BSE struck, I thought, well, this is it. And it just came. Uh, and I built it, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I knew I had to mould the horns and use the horns, and I made this diminishing, diminishing pile of all from the same water buffalo horn. In one day I might only spend like a quarter of an hour chipping away at a bit of stone, and then half an hour doing something else, and that's how I've got to keep working. I find that's the only way I can keep working. I used to, when I first started, being so bloody naive, I, um, I'd go into a project, start a piece, and go right to the end on it, and then I have nothing. I'd have to start all over again. And month, I'd, I'd waste months that way. I think it was the way I had to. It was the learning curve. But now I make sure I've got something on the go. Because even if I've only got 10 minutes, I can fill it just doing something. You know? It might be only be putting a coat of latex on a, on a mold, or it might be actually making a little thing out of clay, or you know, I just keep it moving. I very much like everything I make to be used um, and what I really like to think is that people buy my work because they like the look of it um, and they like to be able to use it so I think uh, quite a lot about um, function when I'm making things. My idea would be to set up a, uh, a community uh, sculpture workshop where, where uh, a group of, of sculptors can work together uh, and bring on the next generation, help the schools. I followed the stone, and stone's a wonderful, wonderful material. Uh, you just look at a piece of stone, you can see something, it's like a cloud, really, and you, you can follow that. And I think that's when you achieve the, a state of grace, um, and time just disappears. What isn't art, <laughs> really? I mean, everything, everything's art in many ways, and that's why it's so hard, that question of, the question of what is and what isn't art it has, has been with us since the dawn of time.